guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Cynthia, this is Claire. Because we had such a great reaction to Claire, we are welcoming her back for this video. And today we're going to be talking about a very requested video and that is going to be sunscreen. And sunscreen is a huge topic. Even Claire admitted that it's very hella complicated. Complicated, yes. But before we get started, please make sure to subscribe down below. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get right to it. So just a couple things before I get started. I do wanna mention that I am obviously not a chemist or a scientist, um, and there are a lot of really great resources out there. I've learned about sunscreen from a lot of different places, but a couple of blogs that are really helpful if you're looking to get a little bit more in-depth information are gonna be Lab Muffin, Muffin, Lab mm -hmm. Muffin, and Kind of Steven. Mm -hmm. um, they are both cosmetic chemists and they have a lot of really good, still understandable information on the subject. And then also, today I'm gonna to be talking about sunscreens that are available in the US. There are a lot of sunscreens that are not FDA approved that you can't get in the US. They're supposed to be really great. I just don't have as much information about them because I'm in the US. Hey, Cynthia. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wear sunscreen? I don't wear sunscreen. Okay. I know I should. I just feel like as a makeup person, a makeup wearer, I add so many layers yeah, um, to my that. face that I feel like if if my foundation already has a little SPF, I just like completely skip the sunscreen step and it's not the best. I'm trying to get better at it, but I know it's important and I feel like I should wear sunscreen as well as everybody else. It is super important. Um, I'll fire you later, it's okay. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I'm actually gonna go over specifically like why it's still important to wear sunscreen with makeup. We're gonna get to that towards the end there. Um, so I kind of want to start off talking about why you need sunscreen. And it seems like you kind of know why we need sunscreen. Do you want to give it a shot? I feel like sunscreen is important so your skin doesn't maybe absorb all the uv rays and mm -hmm. potentially harm your skin yeah no that's that's very true okay so there's two <laughs> main reasons that you want to be make sure that you're wearing sunscreen the first main reason that you want to make sure that you're using sunscreen is because cancer is bad nobody yes. nobody wants cancer no. melanoma is a huge thing there's a couple different types of skin cancer and it is a very real issue like we live in Washington. Um, how how bad do you think skin cancer is in Washington? I think that it's a small percentage maybe compared to other states like say California. Mm -hmm. I think out of like our population, I think only maybe like five or seven percent of people of the whole population the whole yeah, might be prone to that. I actually don't know the exact percentages, but yeah. I believe that Washington has the seventh highest skin cancer rate in the US. And part of that is because it doesn't really get very sunny here a lot of the time. So people don't think that they need sunscreen. Like if you're in LA, like you know that you need that sunscreen, so you're gonna put that sunscreen on. But here, like people just don't know that they need it, so they don't wear it. And then we have crazy amounts of cancer issues. That is crazy. So <laughs> it, is, it does really make a legitimately huge issue. Yeah. The other thing that you wanna keep in mind for sunscreen is that uh, UVAs can cause a huge amount of photo aging to your skin. So, if, especially if you see women who've done a lot of tanning when they were younger, things like that, as they get older, their skin tends to look a little bit more leathery, they have more issues with dark spots, hyperpigmentation, which are gonna be sunspots. Sometimes they look a little bit like freckles, but they can also become kind of large, weird shaped dark spots on the face. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that picture that's all over the internet of the truck driver, where one side of his face is just crazy old looking and the other side is like just a normal old dude. Um, that's because he got a lot more sun on the side that was his driver's side. Um, so yeah, it just, it can do a lot in terms of fine lines and discoloration on the skin. So next we're gonna talk about who needs sunscreen. Who needs sunscreen, Cynthia? Everybody needs hey. sunscreen, everybody. Yes. So everybody needs sunscreen. It doesn't matter how old you are, what gender you are, what race you are. Um, I get a lot of clientele who are people of color who think that it's not as important to wear sunscreen, but it totally is because even if you're facing reduced risk of cancer, there is still a risk. And then hyperpigmentation and fine lines can affect anybody. The other people who wanna be really especially careful to be wearing sunscreen are anybody who uses any glycolic acid, lactic acid, malic acid, or retinols. Those will all make you more sensitive to sun damage, so it becomes extra important to make sure that you're wearing that sunscreen. Do you know what the two main categories of sunscreen are? 
Um, the two main categories of sunscreen, I believe, are chemical and physical. Yes. Yep. I've even heard mineral. Mineral is something that people call it too. Okay. So chemical and physical are what they're most widely known as, and that's how I'm going to refer to them. Mineral, I believe, is also physical sunscreen, and then you'll also hear organic and inorganic sunscreen, which is actually a much more accurate way to refer to sunscreens because if you think about it, all sunscreen is physical. It's a physical entity. All sunscreen is physical. Mm -hmm. Also, all sunscreen is chemical. Like everything in our life is made up of chemicals. So it's kind of misleading to say physical and chemical. Um, and we'll get a little bit more into that in a minute. But basically, physical is called inorganic sunscreen and chemical is called organic sunscreen. And that doesn't have to do with how natural product is. It has to do with if it has carbon or not. Which one would you prefer? Okay, so we're gonna go into kind of the differences here. Physical sunscreen, a lot of people th think of physical as scattering and reflecting UV rays. So basically the idea, what, is, what does that mean to you? Do you kind of have any idea what that means? Maybe that just means spreading out, kind of like <sighs> diffusing. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's kind of like where the UV rays are basically like bouncing off of your skin almost is how it's getting rid of them. And then chemical absorbs them and then turns them into heat, interestingly enough. Oh. Um, that is a really simplified way of looking at sunscreen and it's not a bad way of looking at sunscreen, but it is important to know that there's actually a huge amount of overlap between the two categories where physical sunscreen does do the absorbing and turning into heat as well. And then some chemical sunscreens, like the newer ones that are um, approved in Asia and Europe, can actually do the scatter and reflecting as well. But just know that there is a lot of overlap there. Do you know the difference between, I'm just like quizzing you here today. No, that's totally fine. I don't actually, I just, I've always seen them like paired together mm -hmm. in packaging on the description. Yeah, so. so a lot of times things that have both will be broad spectrum. So UVA and UVB refers to the wavelength of the UV waves that are basically hitting your skin and causing skin damage. UVB, you can think of as B being for burn. So UVB rays are typically more commonly associated with causing sunburns for your skin. They're also the ones that people think of a lot more when it comes to being um, carcinogenic, cancer causing. Yeah. UVA rays, you can think of A for aging because those are the rays that are most commonly associated with cell degradation and increasing fine lines, um, pigmentation, things like that. So UVA and UVB. In the US, SPF only refers to UVB protection. So when you see something with SPF, it is not gonna do anything for you for UVA protection, which is that aging protection, unless it also has some sort of broad spectrum on it, anything like that. When you're looking for UVA protection, there are gonna be three ingredients that you can look at that you'll know, okay, this is gonna give me that UVA protection. Both of the sunscreens that we know commonly as being physical sunscreens are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Both of those are going to give you UVA protection. And then there's also an ingredient called avobenzone. That is gonna be what we think of as being a chemical sunscreen. That actually gives you even better UVA protection. So chemical sunscreens can actually potentially give you a little bit more UVA protection than physical ones can, as long as they have that avobenzone in there. So oh. physical sunscreens <laughs> tend to be the sunscreens that give you a little bit more of that white cast and can be a little bit greasier in terms of texture. While chemical sunscreens can be those really nice lightweight ones that just sink into the skin really quickly and nicely. Other differences are going to be physical can be a little bit better if you have really sensitive skin and chemical is nice in the fact that you really just don't have to worry about like that texture issue. So that's something to keep in mind. Chemical does not mean bad. Do you know what sunscreen stands for? What does SPF stand for? <laughs> SPF stands for sun protection factor. So okay. what does SPF measure? I'm okay. not sure. A lot of people don't. What SPF measures is how long your skin can be exposed to UV before turning red with sunscreen versus without sunscreen. So a lot of times you'll hear people refer to SPF as a measurement of time because you're kind of looking at like how long does it take for you to burn with sunscreen versus without sunscreen. However, that can be a little bit misleading because throughout the day, there are way different UV levels that you experience. So two hours is a really good rule of thumb for reapplication. Do you feel like the more SPF a product has, the more effective it will be at protecting me Basically, against the sun? Yes. Okay. The idea is just that the more SPF you have, hypothetically, the longer you can spend in the sun or the more UV that your skin can take in. 
When you're looking at sunscreen protection, in labs, it is consistently used at a certain amount. So when they're testing sunscreen to say, this is how much protection they're giving you, they're testing it at a certain amount that for everyday use, can equate to about a quarter of a teaspoon. So it's gonna be about this amount right here, which is a lot more than most people use. So it kind of looks like a lot. Honestly, yes. Yes, it does. I feel like, how would I even be able to spread this out on my face? That's kind of how and, I And feel. that's a concern that a lot of people have. So there is a linear relationship between amount applied and the SPF protection that you're getting. Basically what that means is that if you use half of the amount of sunscreen that you need for your whole face, then you're getting half of that SPF. So say that you're using SPF 50 and you're only using half of that amount that Cynthia showed you, then you're only getting SPF 25. So that is one reason to use a higher SPF because if you know that you're not gonna be able to use the full amount of it, even if you're using a little bit less, you'll still be getting more coverage. So that is one of the reasons that I think that just SPF in makeup is really not adequate for giving you full sunscreen protection because a lot of people don't use that much makeup. Definitely some people do if you're going for more of a full beat, a full face, that kind of thing, but I know that I do not wear anywhere near that much makeup. So it is really important to still have another form of sunscreen protection. Although I do also want to mention that some sunscreen protection is better than no sunscreen protection. Absolutely. I did actually have a lady yesterday, mm -hmm. last night, and she said, well, my primer already has a little bit of SPF, so I was wanting a foundation with SPF to kind of layer them together and then therefore have more sunscreen mm -hmm. protection. Yeah. Like, what do you, how do you feel so, about that? So, in a perfect world that doesn't really work, SPF doesn't really stack, but in a world where people aren't using enough sunscreen, that can increase the coverage. It gets a little bit tricky though, where when you're looking at a sunscreen formulation, there are certain sunscreens that actually can kind of destabilize each other. When you're layering two different sunscreens over top, there can actually be like a little bit of potential for a problem there. So if you're layering sunscreens, you wanna to try to make sure that you're layering the same type of sunscreen. So if you're using a physical sunscreen to start off, it's great to keep a physical over top of that. Specifically, avobenzone is the one that can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So just make sure that you're kind of using the same sunscreen formulations over each other. But it is still really important just to have a good base of sunscreen before your makeup. So talking about that, I kind of want to go into how to use sunscreen with your makeup. So how would you do it? I would use my sunscreen as the very last step to my skincare routine and then then I would start the makeup. Sunscreen after moisturizer. Sunscreen after moisturizer. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then you want to follow up with your makeup. It is good to give your skin a little bit of time in between the stages before and after sunscreen. So I personally typically do my skincare then I kind of like walk around my house, watch YouTube, read a book, whatever, for like five minutes or so. And then I'll put my sunscreen on and then I'll kind of putz around for another five minutes doing like morning stuff, getting ready, doing my hair if I decide I'm not lazy and want to do my hair. Um, so it's good to just give it a little bit of a buffer zone. If you're putting it on right after your moisturizer and then you're immediately putting on um, your makeup right after that, it can actually kind of stick to those products and then form little balls. So just a little bit of wiggle room in between each step is good. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that you can do throughout the day, from a lot of people, I get the concern that like, okay, I have sunscreen on and I'm supposed to reapply this every two hours. How? There are a couple cool different products out there. SPF sprays and SPF setting powders. They are really handy as reapplication tools. I personally don't rely on them for my only sunscreen protection. With a spray and a powder, it's hard to get enough of it because you really do need a lot of SPF to get that full coverage. So I like to have a base of normal sunscreen and then throughout the day, if I reapply, I'll use that powder or that setting spray because it's nice to get that reapplication. I don't really want to rub a cream all over my makeup and end up with like my eyebrows down here and my blush up here not gonna be cute but really the big takeaway is that sunscreen is important and cancer is bad so just make sure that you're using some form of sunscreen especially going into summer but year-round it is still important let's talk yeah. about the best sunscreens yeah. in Sephora so I am going to talk a lot about a brand called Supergoop. Supergoop, yes. Do you know anything about Supergoop? Um, I know that they specialize in the sunscreen yes. realm, like that's their forte. I feel like they revolve the whole brand around that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is really all that they do. We're not getting paid by Supergoop, Although if super goofy you want to give me some money or some free sunscreen, that'd She's be cool. Good. But part of the reason that I like a lot of their products so much is because that is really what they do. That is what their cosmetic chemists are hired to know about. That is really their specialty. They're not like 
a makeup brand that, oh, we also do sunscreen, which is not a bad thing, but I just like knowing that they have all of this information and they really put their energy into developing products that are usable for the everyday person. So I'm gonna start talking about the different sunscreens that I really like that Sephora carries, but you'll see Supergoop kind of in there a couple different times. So first up, we are gonna talk about some of the setting sprays that I like that have sunscreen. What ones do you know about? I would really only think about the Kate Somerville spray. Yeah, it's incredibly popular. The Kate Somerville says that it's mattifying. I find that it leaves more of a satiny finish, but it is an SPF 50, which is great. It does come in an aerosol, which some people prefer, some people don't want, totally personal preference at the end of the day. Only thing, um, small caveat, it does have a really strong lavender smell, which a lot of people like, but just if you're thinking about buying it online or anything, know that going into it. The other one that I love is actually the Super Goop setting spray. So that one is also gonna be an SPF 50. And I love how it smells. It's rosemary and mint, I think is what it is. And it just smells really real nice. good. Um, and that one is going to be not an aerosol. It's just a little spritzer. Another caveat, the little size of that, the nozzle can get kind of clogged sometimes. So not my favorite, but the full size is bomb. So going into setting powders that have SPF, we're gonna go back again to Super Goop. I like that one a lot because they actually have a couple different shades. So that's a little bit more inclusive. So they have a translucent one, which is translucent for all of Caucasian people. But as we know, translucent products do not always translate well onto people of color. Mm -hmm. So they also do have a couple different shades. I think they have like a light, a medium, a deep or something like that. But it is nice. It's not gonna give you a lot of coverage or a lot of color, but it will make it blend seamlessly into the skin. So basically you just wanna make sure that you're buffing it on. Again, it's just all about making sure that you're using as much as possible without looking like a crazy person. It's good for finding that balance in there. There is also a really nice powder from Solar Science, I think it's called. I haven't played with it, but I've heard about it and it's supposed to be real nice. So next up, last super group that we're gonna talk about is Unseen Sunscreen. I have seen it and um, I've heard of it many, many times, so I feel like it's one of the more popular ones. Yes, yeah. it's super popular right now and I do really love it. It's an incredibly inclusive sunscreen. It won't give you any white cast, so you won't have to deal with any of that weird gray tint, any ashiness, it works incredibly well for people of color, as well as my pale ass. So it's nice because like I said, it is totally clear. It almost feels like a primer, which again is gonna be a little bit of a preference if you like that kind of silicone-y slip feel to it, but it wears really well under makeup and it's just a really beautiful sunscreen. Next up, we're gonna talk about my personal favorite sunscreen, which is Pharmacy Green Screen. Um, there is very minimal white cast to it. I would say if you have incredibly deep skin, you might experience a little bit, but for the most part, it's pretty clear, but it just feels like butter on your skin. Like I just put it on and it just kind of melts into my skin. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel greasy, it doesn't feel like that silicone-y feel that a lot of people like, it just is like gone. So I know that everyone who works in the skincare department right now uses that sunscreen. It just feels great. It does feel really good actually, yeah. really nice. Next up, we're gonna talk about Shiseido. I know that the Shiseido SPF 42 was one of the best selling sunscreens in Sephora for a long time. It is important to note that there is a bit of a white cast to it and by a bit of a white cast, I mean like a pretty, pretty hefty white cast, but it has a beautiful matte powdery texture. So this is gonna be great if you have oily skin and you're worried about that greasy feeling. It's almost like a liquid, like it looks almost like watery when it comes out and it just spreads really, really nicely and gives you that beautiful matte finish. We're gonna talk about the Lancome sunscreen now. And Lancome I feel like is a brand that I don't always think of first off the top of my head when it comes to skincare, not because it's bad, it just isn't like my mental number one, but they have an SPF 50 that is water resistant and it is fantastic. It's incredibly lightweight. The water resistant aspect of it is nice because we're going into summer, people are gonna get a little bit sweaty. Um, and then it is going to be pretty clear. There's very little white cast to it and it just feels great on the skin. So that is a good one to look for. Price-wise, it's not too crazy. There's also gonna be the Carez SPF 30. Carez it smells so good. Sunscreen. It smells okay. kind of like coconutty. It smells yeah. like summer. It, smells, it just like smells like summer. summer. It smells really, really good. I like that. Um, I'm gonna say minimal white cast to it, but there is a little bit depending on how deep the skin tone is. Yeah. Very lightweight though. Again, gonna be that lighter watery texture. And then the last one that we're gonna talk about is gonna be the Murad SPF 50. Yes. So it looks kind of peachy when it comes out. That is meant to sort of neutralize any white tones that you can get because that one is going to be a physical sunscreen, which is typically associated with more white tones. But that one is nice because it is broad spectrum you're getting full coverage. They do claim that you're getting blue light resistance as well, which is 
damage that can come from like cell phone screens, laptop screens, things like that. So the Murad is gonna be a little bit heavier than some of the other ones I've talked about, but really great protection. One thing I do wanna talk about is why you need to reapply sunscreen. When you put on moisturizer, that's not something that you have to reapply like six times throughout the day or every two hours or anything like that. Sunscreen is a little bit different for a couple of reasons. There's actually three main reasons. The first reason that you wanna reapply sunscreen is that you can sweat it off, basically. It can just start to move around and break up throughout the day and you really do need that like solid continuous film to get full sunscreen protection. The second reason that you wanna reapply is that there can be like little holes that get caused in it. It can be disrupted by things throughout the day. So kind of similar idea in terms of like you sweating it off, but it can also just kind of break apart during the day. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last reason is photo degradation. So there are certain SPF ingredients, um, a lot of the older sunscreens too, where they can basically be broken down by UV rays throughout the day. So every two hours is a good solid amount of time to reapply sunscreen. But like I said before, any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen, so do what you can. And that does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please make sure to leave us a like down below. Thank you again to yeah. Claire for giving us this awesome information. And if you like Claire, make sure to comment down below more Claire because we're trying to get Claire on YouTube. <laughs> like she would be great, she's amazing. Yeah. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on our next video.